and welcome back to another devotion. Reading from our devotional, Farm Raised Devotionals by Adam and Couch. And today's title is, I've Run Out of Juice. So let's just see how God's going to minister to us. He's been so good to us and just helping us. And I don't know about you, but these devotions here lately have really just touched my heart, stirred my spirit. And I don't know, it's just something... I can definitely feel him in this, and I love that. I love that he is so concerned, and he is using this devotional and this word. I have my King James Bible here to really, really just help and minister to our spirits, and I love him for that. So let's just see how he does it today. I've run out of juice. Yes, I was Grandma's constant companion. She took me everywhere with her, even the funeral home. As a small child, I felt out of place there. There weren't any other kids to play with. All the adults were being kind of quiet. They were dressed in their Sunday best. It wasn't Sunday, and this wasn't worship. This felt like a strange place. Funerals are sad. That's just a fact. It doesn't matter if you know the person or not. It's sad. At this funeral with my grandmother, my very young heart was touched deeply. I began to cry. Grandma handed me a tissue. She also handed me a piece of gum. I unwrapped it set the wrapper aside, and folded the stick of gum into my mouth. It was so juicy and full of flavor. I didn't feel the need to cry when I had the gum to distract me. But soon the gum lost its flavor. I've run out of juice, I whispered to Grandma. That was my ex explanation I gave when the gum didn't taste good anymore. So Grandma would give me another piece. Well, it also ran out of flavor, and I asked for another piece. I don't know how many pieces of gum I went through, but Grandma eventually said she was out of gum. The juice in the gum had distracted me from the unpleasant circumstance of being in a sad place with sad people over a sad circumstance. I know of folks who prefer to live in a world of distraction. It's easier than facing whatever is really in front of them. And this is where our first scripture comes in. It's coming from Luke chapter 1 and verse 34. And I will be reading from the King James Version. And take heed to yourselves, lest, any, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that the day come upon your unawares. Dissipation means to squander money or energy or resources. We can spend a lot of time and energy, money, etc. when we are trapped in distractions or when we avoid facing what is really keeping us stuck. I went through a whole pack of gum. And the next scripture comes from Psalms 34 and verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. Wow. I get what she's saying. I mean, I understand the story and the gum and stuff. But, you know, this reminds me of a time in my life where my life was so void. It was a void that needed to be filled. And I would do any and everything I could to try to fill that void. And I would try all kinds of things. Things that were definitely not of God. Um, I would party too much. I would drink too much. I would take too many pills. Um, I would partake in too many activities that just weren't of God. Anything I could do to try to fill this void, I was trying to fill it when I know now, and I knew then, I just didn't want to accept it, but I know now the only one who can fill that void is the one who created us and was made made us so that he could fill that void. And that was God. But, you know, when you're caught up in life and you're caught up in in that scenario, sometimes you can get caught up in it and don't even realize it at the time what's going on. I mean, there was times that I was going through things that I didn't even realize what the overconsumption of alcohol and that, the overconsumption of pills all of that, I didn't even understand what I was doing was trying to fill a void. I just knew that I was something was missing. Something wasn't right. Um, I would drink to try to forget. I would take pills to try to numb myself. I would take pills to just sleep. I remember 
there was times that, I mean, it was nothing for me to pop four Xanax at a time and just sleep the entire weekend away. In fact, my mom and my daughter and I were just talking about this. Delano was in high school and I was in a really bad marriage and I was just unhappy, just unhappy. And I would get off of work on a Saturday. I had a salon, a hair salon, and I would work Tuesday through Saturday. I would get off of work on a Saturday, go home, pop four Xanax, and sleep the entire weekend because I didn't want to have to deal with anything. I mean, Delana was old enough. She was a teenager at that time, and thank God she was as good as she was, but she would come in there every so often, you know, wake me up, let me know she's okay, and then I'd go back to sleep. I mean, it was just, I did not want to face life. I, I It was just not something I wanted to deal with, so my solution, instead of praying and seeking God and letting Him come in and help me correct all of that, I would just go home and, and over-medicate and just take pills. And then kind of come through that somewhat and um, started hanging out with the wrong crowd and got into a different lifestyle of partying. Well, then I didn't want to sleep, so I would drink and just, you know, party all the time. And I was running on a high of um, just oh, this was the best, this is life, you know, but, and then I would lay down at night after I'd partied all night and drank and just acted a fool, um, then I would lay down at night and then just ask, tell God, I know that, it, please don't come back tonight, because I know if you come back tonight, I'm going straight to hell, because there's nothing in me, there's nothing about my life that is right, I would know this, that inner man knew this, but I would just keep drinking and partying and push it aside. I can remember being out partying, being drunk as a skunk, y'all, being so liquored up and crying and just knowing that I'm not right, that I'm not pleasing God, that this is not how he created me. In fact, in fact, um, the breaking point for that, James and I had gotten together. I would got out of the marriage and, um, James and I had gotten together, and we were out partying with one of my girlfriends, and I got so drunk, y'all. I know, I know without a shadow of a doubt that I was literally right there at alcohol poison. I know, because I was so sick, so, so sick. Um, I threw up so much to the point I busted blood vessels in my eyes. I was in bed for days just sick as a dog. And I remember being in the back seat of the car with him, telling him this was not who I was created to be. That the only reason I was alive right now is my granny was up praying for me. I just knew she was. I just knew she was up in the middle of the night praying for me. And I told him right then and there, I said, if this is a lifestyle you want, if this is what you want, I'm not your girl. Because I was not created to live like this. And I made God a promise. I was like, if you let me live through this, I'll never drink again. And I haven't. And I know that it was the mercy and the grace of God. I had to get to that point. I quit popping pills. I quit drinking. I quit hanging out with that crowd. And I began to let the Lord do a work in me. And he started a process. And it is a process. When you give your life to God, I don't care how old or how young you are. It is a process that you will go through. And if you just let him have control and put self and flesh aside, he will get you through it. Now, there, you're going to hurt. There's going to be times you are hurting and you're laying on your floor just in agonizing pain and crying and asking him to help you. But he is. It's a process. You're on that potter's wheel and he's molding you and he's making you. And it is not a pleasant experience. It's not. It's very painful. It can be scary. It can be very tiresome. It can wear you out spiritually and physically. But when he gets done with you in this process, the outcome is going to be worth every tear every drop of pain, and you're going to learn so much about yourself, about him, and how good he is. It's amazing how the things that I learn in the deepest, darkest 
most painful times of my life of in this process with God. I learned who he was. I learned how much he truly loves me. And he was willing to do all of that, take me through this because he loved me so much. And as a parent, I've said so many times, I kind of look at my role as a parent as how God kind of looks at me. And there are so many times as a parent that we have to do things that our children don't understand and it's not comfortable for them. It may hurt them. They don't like it. They even don't like us because we're having to be the parent and stand our ground and make some decisions that we know is in their best interest that they're too young to understand that. They can't see the forest for the trees because they're, they're children. That's why they're in our care. So I know that's, that was the same thing with me and God. He was having to do things to me and for me that I couldn't understand because he's God and he could see. But I trusted him anyway. And I give it all to him. I give myself to him. And he has never, ever, ever left me. There have been times that I kind of ignored him. But he never, ever, ever ignored me. He has always been there for me. There's not a time in my life before that and since that that I could sit here and tell you, oh, yeah, I crawled out to him. And he, didn't, he didn't do nothing for me. He wasn't there. Like he said, he just left me. He abandoned me. I cannot say that about him because he has never, ever forsaken me, left me, abandoned me. Now, there may be times that he was silent, but it just made me pray that much more. And he knew that. He knew that. He knew he had to be silent. But he was always there looking out for me and taking care of me. So if you're going through something, if you're in a place where you've tried everything, you know, you tried. I told y'all before, there was one time that I tried filling voids with houseplants. Whatever, I, could, I couldn't get enough of them. And it still didn't satisfy that inner man. There's been so many things that I have tried to fill this void that was truly only intended for God. So if you're going through something and you find yourself, you know, you're doing all these different things and nothing is making you happy, nothing is making you content, try talking to God and let him be the one to come in. Because I can probably almost guarantee you what's lacking is him. And that does not mean you're a bad person. That doesn't mean you're not a good person. That doesn't mean you're sinning. That just means maybe, you know, human nature, we kind of stray a little bit. And we've tried to fill a void with other things. The void that was only meant for God. You know, there's only a void that only God can fill. And so I just encourage you to talk to him. He understands you. He already knows. He's just sitting there waiting Waiting. Is she? It's today the day. It's today the day they're gonna they're gonna call on me. It's today the day they're gonna let me come in. It's today the day that they're gonna ask me for help and I'm gonna be there. He's just waiting on us, y'all. He is such a good God, a loving God, a kind God, and He only wants the best for us. He's looking out for our best interest. So just talk to Him. You don't have to be fancy. It can be simple. Basic, just like you're talking to a friend. If you have trouble talking, but you're more of a writer, write letters to God. I've done that too. There have been times that I just sit down and just started writing. There have been times that I've been in, in places and situations where I couldn't just talk to the Lord. So I just begin to write to him. Get out my phone, open up the notes, and just start typing God a letter. Whatever you have to do to get in touch with God, to let him come in and fill that void. I promise you. It will be the best thing you've ever done for yourself. I know it was for me. It's been the best thing that I have ever done. Just finally just giving up and submitting myself to God and letting him have the reins in my life. Letting him take control. Letting him lead and guide me. Because he knows what's best. He knows all. I love y'all. I pray that this has blessed you. I pray that this has encouraged you. And just talk to the Lord. Just talk to the Lord. He's there for you, just wanting to hear what you have to say. He literally hangs on every word that we say. He's such a good God. Have a blessed day, y'all, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, y'all.